Hello everyone, welcome back. You're watching Empyrean Galactic Survival Episode 112. I'm Enigmius and today we're continuing with our hover vessel mining ship. We started in the last episode, we're going to try and get as much done as we can in this episode. I already know how much we get done on this one and the next one. <laughs> Cheating a little bit. We get the idea, we've got a relatively small ship that we're putting together specifically to carry drills that we can use to extract minerals faster than we could do it by hand, faster than we could do it with auto miners, but obviously not without the infinite supply ability that the auto miners provide. So it's not a bad goal, I don't think, to have at least one functional hover vessel with mining stuff on it in your fleet, just for those situations where you need something and you need it now and you don't have time to wait for an auto miner. That having been said, um, I, I didn't want to just do like a mining sled like you'll see in the background from time to time where everything is just sort of jammed on and we take it out and mine when we have to. I still wanted to put some time and effort into this build and make it a ship that was interesting, uh, at least to me. Some people might not find it interesting and that's okay, but I will find it interesting. I already know because it's starting to take shape fairly well. This is one of the drill turrets and I've, I've never actually... Um, had any of these drill turrets work yet. I'm not saying that they they were in a situation where they should have worked and they didn't. I'm saying that I've never really put them in a position where I was expecting them to work. The time that I had drill turrets mounted on the sled for testing, I never actually went near any resources that I was interested in gathering. I was just digging around in the ground, pulling up crushed rock. There was... <laughs> nothing there for the turrets to really work on as far as I know so that might have been part of the reason why they didn't work that or maybe they require me to select them and see if they will do something on their own independently of the fixed drills I don't I don't really know for sure I'm sure someone will tell me but either way based on the position that they're in now relative to how they actually work either they'll work where they are or they won't <laughs> that's kind of the thing if they work where they are they're basically designed to cover as much area as possible. We're not interested so much in overlapping fields of fire to get as much out of each drill as we possibly can in any given situation. Because there's really, when we're talking about mining, there's no such thing as the universal situation where everything always works out exactly this way and therefore the position of this, that, and the other thing is optimal in a certain way because everything else is the same kind of tough to say that when we're talking about digging around in the ground for pretty much anything. One of the tips that I came across as I was doing this, and I'm doing it right now, you can see, is taking a little bit of time from time to time to clean up all of the orphan blocks that we create when we're building a ship like this, where we're very much building by the seat of our pants, and we put things in place and we try them and they don't work, so we remove the parts that are relevant to the area that we're working on specifically, but we end up with all these orphaned blocks left lying around all over the ship, pretty much. And in my case, it's usually the interior because the exterior is the part that we tend to work on the most. And it makes a lot of sense to just stop from time to time and clear out a lot of the excess blocks before they have an opportunity to become confusing because when you come through and start working on an area and you don't know what blocks have to stay there and what blocks can be safely removed, it can be kind of a pain. So if we do a little bit of cleanup from time to time as we go, it's a lot less confusing later on when we're trying to figure out exactly what has to stay uh, and, and what is completely superfluous. You can see the interior here is actually quite small. There's not a lot of room for much of anything. And that's okay because we don't need a lot of room for much of anything. Uh, by the time we're done, I think we're going to have um, a well-utilized interior without a lot of empty space. But at the same time, I don't think we're going to be lacking for space. I don't think we're going to be having to sacrifice things because we don't have space to put them. And I don't think it's going to be so cramped as to be claustrophobic and frustrating to maneuver around in. But it'll be one of the, the smaller um, cockpit areas that I've created in a long, long time. Now, the shape that I'm doing now, basically around all four faces of this orb, that's right, the orb with four faces is, you, you can see it's very, very simple. There's not a whole lot to it. And the whole idea is that um, most of the detail that makes it look round is going to come in the form of things that we do in between these four faces to join them together with curves as opposed to 
straight lines. And I think I mentioned in the last episode, part of that will involve leaving uh, thruster ports in various different strategic places so that we don't have to try and make impossible shapes with the blocks we're given in order to fill things in and make them look the way that we want them to look. All we have to do is leave certain key spaces open, fill them in with thrusters so they have a purpose to be open, and they'll pretend like that was just convenient and not a cheaty method of making things look the way we want them to. Here's kind of a, a, a bit of a challenge. This section here, this front section, this um, profile that we're working on, because we can't do just a, a plain circular curve from one area to the other because of the drills. We have to kind of have it smushed a little bit, a little bit more elliptical. So it takes a little bit longer in this situation to sort of figure out exactly how we want to do the layout because it's almost impossible to get any kind of guide or pre-made curve for something like this done for us. We just kind of have to sort it out on our own. And you can see, once we get a little bit of momentum headed in the right direction, the shape comes together fairly easily. Fairly easily, I should point out. And again, we've got um, this space where the drill turrets are sitting, so that's helping us a little bit in terms of not having to make things come together in ways that are otherwise impossible. We can take our time a little bit and take certain liberties with the layout, because anything that would have been really, really difficult to make look good we don't have to make it look good because that's where the turrets are. So it's pretty handy. Now this was kind of a spot where I decided I wanted to round off the interior corners with the turrets. And I encountered a bit of a technical difficulty. Uh, I wasn't able to use the remainder of the footage that I had taken of that process. So we're skipping ahead just a little bit, just a few minutes. You can see we've done, you can see the little rounded blocks in the corners around in behind the turrets. Uh, and also you can see that we put sort of a roof in the upper left corner of the screen above those top drill turrets. And that's kind of the embodiment of that profile, that not quite circular profile coming around. And then of course on the underside, we don't have to worry too much about putting that in place. We could if we wanted to, I don't think we want to right now. Someone had brought up um, the importance of the placement of the side drills. And it was very, you know, it was very um, accurate. Uh, statement specifically in the sense that if they're not in the right position they're not going to contact any material that they can remove and you can see now they're just one block behind the central drills and they're also lined up with the uh, end of the drill turret barrels so what we've done is we put ourselves in a position where the edge turrets or I'm um, sorry the edge drills are far enough forward that they'll be able to contact material um, just behind where the central drills are going to be removing it. So if you're coming to a wall that you can drill into, the first drills that are gonna hit that wall are the center drills, and they're gonna go one block depth, and then the side drills are gonna be able to get a purchase on the material on the sides. And then as you move forward, it'll all just kind of clear everything out that way. And it's also designed to give us that option to sort of turn inside the hole that we dig and not have the drills be in our way if that makes any sense. I, I, I kind of expect that that's a very poor way of describing what I have in my mind, which makes perfect sense, but the words don't. <laughs> so you have to excuse me on that. You get the idea. Sometimes we just, we're trying to do something. Uh, in this case, we want to make sure that, you know, as an example, we can rotate this ship 180 degrees in any hole that we've dug because it's round. It's all the way around. And even though the front is kind of smushed and elliptical, the pattern that we're digging is sufficiently round that we'll be able to rotate and not have anything catch on the sides of the area that we've been digging. That's maybe the better way to describe it. So now we've got this issue of how many thrusters do we put on this ship and why. And specifically in this case, um, one of the things that I found with the sled that I built is I had uh, plenty of thrusters for reverse on the sled and it still felt like it was just barely enough. So we're going to start off with 10 reverse thrusters which is, uh, I believe, pretty much exactly what we had. No, we had eight reverse thrusters on the sled, now that I think about it. So we're going to have a couple of extra reverse thrusters. And we're in a position as well where if we want to add more, we have plenty of space where we can find a home for more. It's just a question of, you know, clearing out a spot and then adding more thrusters. 
Something that I learned with the Saturnus when we did all of that detailed texturing and painting and all that stuff on the interior of the ship and the exterior to a lesser extent is that when we've got uh, open areas in behind blocks, like you can see now, we've got, we had a thruster in there and then above and below the thruster, they're just basically open areas and you get a lot of light bleeding through those areas and it kind of makes it a little bit difficult to get the effect that you're going for because you can see where you're going to get light bleeding through but at the same time you, it's not always forefront in your mind you're, you're not always in a position to anticipate that so you place something and then you texture it and you do lighting around it and doing all kinds of different things and you end up with components that just don't look the way you wanted them to because we left holes and gaps and things so a lot of what i'm doing here when I'm filling in the gaps around these thrusters, it's not for defensive purposes because realistically speaking, it's not necessary and it's not in a position where it's going to do much good for us. But it is, aesthetically speaking, something that makes a lot of sense because it's going to seal that whole thing in and we can decide for ourselves exactly what we want the effect around those thrusters to be and not worry about light bleeding through and all that other stuff. So 10 thrusters on the front for reverse is not a bad way to start in the next episode we're going to carry on we're going to start putting some other thrusters in other places around the ship we're going to close it in and we're going to start getting the interior squared away with all of the myriad different goodies and doodads that you need in the inside of a hover vessel and then i think by the fifth episode in the series if it goes that far the ship will be done we'll have a blueprint for you before we do that once the ship is done so to speak we're going to test it and make sure that the drill turrets work based on what we've done and all the other things work and uh, harmoniously and effectively and then we'll have another blueprint for you guys so if you want to be notified about the next episode you can subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media links for social media are always in the information section below the video feel free to leave your comments and feedback thanks for watching guys and take care